The preseason is over as the Bears finish 3-0 in their exhibitions, which means the real games are about to start. Who is ready for week one when the Bears take on the San Francisco 49ers? If you are, like the video, shooting for over 1,000 likes on today's show. I know you guys can do it. So hit that thumbs up icon if you're fired up for week one. Welcome into Chicago Bears Now. I am your host, Harrison Graham. The Bears completed their preseason with a 21-20 victory over the Cleveland Browns on Saturday night. And on today's show, we got some Bears winners and losers uh, coming out of this matchup. So we'll kind of dive into that as a whole coming up on today's show. It was a fun night as the Bears were able to complete a 3-0 preseason. Justin Fields was tremendous. Hint, hint, he might be a winner out of this one. We got to see David Montgomery. No Roquan Smith. We thought he might play, but he did not. Dante Pettis had a nice game as well, and the starting defense did well. Browns had a late rally, but uh, all in all, the Bears were rock solid from start to finish in a 21-20 win. All right, winners and losers coming at you. We'll start with the winners here against the Cleveland Browns. What else needs to be said? Justin Fields, the quarterback. Uh, listen, <laughs> I think I broke it down pretty clearly in our post-game show. If you missed it, go check it out. Uh, but he was unreal. 14-16, 156 yards, three touchdowns. One of those incompletions was a throwaway. Did miss one throw on a crossing pattern over the middle, threw it a bit high. But, I mean, you couldn't script up a better night for him with what Matt Eberflutes and Luke Getze probably wanted. They were like, okay, he's going to play about a half, and uh, let's see how he does. Uh, he was tremendous. He played unbelievable. Five drives, three touchdowns. Um, he looked comfortable. He looked confident. He threw with accuracy, with velocity when he needed to. A couple of nice throws. Honestly, the most impressive throw he made was on like a seven- or eight-yard out route. Producer Jeremy, who's producing this show, was with me. He lofted it over the linebacker in stride to his receiver, and we both looked at each other. We were like, that's a big-time throw. You're like, that. that's not That's not easy. Then he had a nice scramble drill where he low, uh, rolled to his left and kind of bought himself time, looked away, and then threw to Pettis for a first down. He just looked comfortable. That's the word, comfortable and confident. I was really impressed. He was absolutely tremendous, easily the biggest winner coming out of this game. So how hyped are you for the quarterback heading into the season opener? Scale it from 1 to 100. 1 being not at all. 100 equals incredibly confident. I mean, after this one, man, you better be at least in the 80s. I'm feeling pretty good. Let us know. Pin comment on today's show. Scale it from 1 to 100 when it comes to Justin Fields. How about Dante Pettis? Listen, the receiver who's bounced around. He, you know, had a good rookie year with the Niners. Then he got ran out of there. Giants last year. Bears signed him this offseason. He made an argument to make the 53. Three catches, 37 yards, and a touchdown. Caught a couple of punts. He looks smooth, man. The route on the touchdown was pretty nice. Man-to-man -man coverage, simple. It was about a 15-yard out route. Beat his man. Fields threw a perfect ball. He caught it. Two feet inbounds. Touchdown. He made an argument. We'll see if he makes the 53. Maybe he gets cut. Nikhil Harry makes it, and then they put Harry on IR, and they bring back Pettis. That could happen, but obviously if you go that route, you risk uh, – another team poaching him if he does hit the waiver wire. I thought he did some good things in the preseason. I think he's made a few plays in practice. We'll see. He is firmly on the bubble, but I thought Dante Pettis made a pretty strong statement on Saturday night. How about Ryan Griffin, uh, the number two tight end behind Cole Komet? And we don't have Komet on our list tonight, but Komet looked good again. Two really solid games from him, I thought, uh, to wrap up the preseason. But Griffin – Rock solid. Did have a holding penalty, but ran a nice route, caught a touchdown. He's going to have a role in this offense. There's going to be a lot of two tight end sets in this scheme with Luke Getze. Uh, Fields' best throw of the night, arguably, was on that first touchdown, that strike between the safety and the corner. It was a perfect ball. Uh, Griffin ran a good route, caught it, uh, and fell into the end zone there. That was really nice to see. Griffin will make some plays here. He's going to block. He's going to make some catches. Uh, he's been around the NFL for a few years. This was a nice signing for the Bears this offseason. He's going to play a lot of football. He's basically a starter because they're going to play a lot of two tight end sets in this offense, especially uh, since uh, the Bears' wide receiver position is still a little bit muddy. All right, Kyler Gordon, the cornerback, before we get to some losers here, he flashed. He played much better, I thought, this time around than in his first preseason game against Seattle nine days ago. Nice pass breakup where he dove on a pass. I think it was a third down, too, where he – Dove, showed off the athleticism, and uh, knocked the ball away. Uh, that was impressive. The athletic traits are clearly there. He had a couple of tackles. He was around the football a few times. Uh, I thought he played with uh, 
better speed and better confidence this time around. Knocked off the rust last time, uh, and then in this game, I thought he was pretty damn good. So I think uh, with him and then Jalen Johnson, who got the night off, I think you got two pretty good corners. Kendall Vilder had a nice breakup too, so those could be your three starting corners on opening night, but I thought uh, Kyler Gordon played pretty darn well. Before we get to some losers, subscribe to the channel. We'll continue to bring you the latest Chicago Bears news and rumors all season long, so be sure to hit that subscribe button here on the channel. And week off, but then uh, week off, not for me, but for the team before week one. Uh, and then it's here, man. Regular season is here, and I am fired up. Don't miss any of it. Daily videos, sometimes multiple videos per day here on the channel. Let's go to some losers. Demontre Tuggle, the running back. Not that he really had a chance to make the roster, but maybe it hurts his practice squad chances. Uh, bad fumble late. Uh, you're up seven after you get a key fourth down stop, and on the first play he fumbles. Can't do it. It's just bad situational football. Uh, at times, he's had some nice plays in the preseason. In the first couple of games, had a few nice runs. Uh, just a brutal fumble, though. Browns end up scoring. They didn't give up the two-point conversion, which would have given the Browns a lead. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just an awful fumble for him. Um, we'll see if he makes the practice squad. Uh, but that was bad. That was really, really bad. Uh, and uh, you could, he could, you could tell he he knew it too. Right after it happened, that was just uh, you got you got a high and tight in those situations. You can't fight for extra yards. It's all about uh, ball security. And he lost the ball, so that was bad. Trevor Simeon, listen, uh, I'm still comfortable with him as the backup, but I thought he played much better the first two preseason games than he did tonight. Bad strip sack uh, uh, that he took uh, that the Browns recovered. Missed a couple of throws. Just didn't play that well this week, and that's okay. Um, you know, he's out there with a lot of backups, and uh, I'm not going to freak out. He's a backup. It is what it is. Like, he's not going to be perfect. I think overall he was fine in the preseason, but just didn't play as well this week. Uh, you know, it just he didn't seem as comfortable, like I said, uh, fumble the ball in that strip sack. Uh, I'm still okay with him overall, but uh, tonight was not his best outing. Are you confident in Trevor Simeon as the backup quarterback? Type Y for yes, type in for no. I feel good about it. You know, if he has to play two or three games, if there's a minor injury to Fields, I think he can at least keep the ship afloat. Obviously, if Fields has a major injury, you're not going to win a ton with Simeon, but if it's a game or two here or there, I think he's a competent backup. Couple more here. Duke Shelley ugh, on the roster bubble entering tonight. Got beat for a touchdown. It, it wasn't pretty. He tried to jump for the ball and he kind of just fell down. Not not great. Got beat for a tutty there. Um, he was playing into the second half. That 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 shows me, you know, his chances of making the team aren't great. We'll see. Cornerback's tricky to figure out. Um you know, does Lamar Jackson make the team? Where do Tavon Young and Thomas Graham factor into things as they have missed most of training camp in the preseason at this point? I don't know. Uh, roster decisions are going to be tough uh, for Ryan Poles, Matt Eberflus, and as cuts come in, we'll have you covered to so subscribe. But uh, 4 o'clock Eastern uh, Tuesday, when we go live, by the way, we'll, we'll, have a, we'll know what the 53 is. So, like we say, subscribe and uh, – Keep an eye on cornerback because that's a tricky position right now. All right, Chase Allen, the four-string tight end. He was a player I was keeping an eye on uh, for this game. Nothing. No targets, no catches. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he, you know, I kind of think just three tight ends are going to make the team. Uh, you got uh, Cole Komet. You got uh, Ryan Griffin. You got James O'Shaughnessy. Allen had a chance to to splash and make the team, but uh, no targets. So I don't know what to make of that. I don't know if that's an Allen problem. I don't know if it was based on the play calls, but uh, didn't uh, didn't do anything. So not ideal for him. He needed to have a good night and uh, just didn't do much. So that's obviously disappointing for him. All right, name a surprise cut candidate for the Bears. I'm not saying uh, Chase Allen or Duke Shelley would be a surprise, uh, but maybe there's someone else. How about after Pettis played tonight? Nikhil Harry, who's been hurt, could he get cut? Tavon Young, Thomas Graham for being injured? Other guys make plays? I don't know. Name a surprise cut candidate for the Bears down in the comments section. All right, that is the uh, winners and losers from the Bears preseason finale against the Cleveland Browns. You can follow me on social media at HGramNFL on Instagram and on Twitter. Same handle, both platforms. Give me a follow. Ask me your Bears questions. I got a few to catch up on after the Bears final preseason game. But we'll make it happen at HGramNFL on both platforms. And, of course, subscribe to the channel as cuts start to come in. We'll have videos for you guys. I'll have tweets. I'll have IG posts. We'll do it all. YouTube.com slash Bears now to subscribe. And, like I said, at HGramNFL to follow on social. All right, I'm Harrison Graham. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Shout out Jeremy Chuggs uh, for producing this thing. And we'll see you guys soon here on Bears Now.